So then guys, this here is the most expensive 14 inch MacBook Pro that money can buy in 2024. So that's right, this MacBook Pro has literally every single upgrade you can possibly put on it. And if you picked all these extra upgrades and everything, it would cost you over $7,000 to buy this MacBook Pro. And today what I want to do for you is I want to do some tests on this most expensive MacBook Pro that is out there right now, the 14 inch model. But first of all, I just want to clarify and show you guys that really this is the best MacBook Pro out there inside of a 14 inch body shape. Let me show you some of the specs right here. So just to show you, first of all, that obviously this is the M4 Max and what we actually have is 12 performance cores and we also have four efficiency cores inside of this. And then you can also see we've got 128 gigabytes of RAM. And then moving over to the graphics, well you can see this is the full fat 40 core version of this M4 Max. And then if I just flick over to the storage, obviously that's my external hard drive just there, but the main hard drive inside of this or the main NAND storage is actually actually eight terabytes. So with that, what I want to do for you guys is show how powerful this MacBook Pro really is by doing some testing and then also showing you also some real life sort of situations with doing some exports like in Final Cut Pro, for example. But first of all, let's go over some benchmarks. So I've of course ran Geekbench 6 single core and multi core on this MacBook Pro. And you can see here with this chart that obviously the M4 Max comes way out in front with the 16 cores inside of it. What you've got to remember is the M3 Max also had a 16 core inside of that. And just have a look at the single core difference. We got 4,092 compared to 3,158. And obviously you can see the evolution ever since the M1 Max. But then looking at the purple bars here, the multi core score, you can even see that we're getting over 27,000 just about here on the M4 Max with 128 gigabytes of RAM inside of it and the 16 core version compared to the 16 core M3 Max that we had from last year. This is absolutely amazing to see here. But not only this, I've also ran the older Cinebench R23 single and multi-core CPU scores. This was the one that's also for Windows sort of computers too. And obviously it uses Rosetta 2 to actually run on your MacBook Pros. And as you can see here, compared to the old M3 Macs with the 16 cores, well obviously the score doesn't look that much different. And I think mainly the reason is because of the limitations of Cinebench R23 of the single core and the multi-core sort of scores that you can see the difference, you know, is 2,200 to 2,315 and then 25,814 to 26,840. But like I said, this is the old Cinebench and now we actually have Cinebench 2024, what's actually being built for sort of Apple Silicon sort of chips. And let's have a look at the scores that we got here instead with this kind of benchmarking. Well, this time you can see the difference. That obviously the M3 Max got a score of 141 in single core compared to 181. And then the actual multi-core performance, well, you can see there, we're talking around about a 25% sort of gain in performance just under that I would say in the M4 Max 16 core compared to the M3 Max 16 core with the 1973 compared to the 1578. Now these scores are super impressive to see first of all but obviously the M4 Max a lot of reviewers including myself out there have actually said that this is even more powerful than the M1 Ultra and the M2 Ultra in the likes of say the Mac Studio and obviously the M2 Ultra in the Mac Pro and just have a look at this chart right here you can see with those scores that we just did there, the M4 Max scores 27,006 in multi-core performance and 4,092 in single core performance. And just have a look at the comparisons there to the M2 Ultra, 2,769 and 21,351. And even the M4 Pro is beating out the likes of the M2 Ultra, but just look how far ahead the M4 Max is. And this is really exciting to see because when the M4 Ultra comes along, the performance in that is just gonna absolutely scream when we get that inside the likes of the Mac Studio and also the Mac Pro. But let's move over then to actual sort of doing some graphic kind of benchmarks on the most powerful 14 inch MacBook Pro money can buy in 2024. 
And first of all, I started off with doing a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Unlimited Graphic Score test. And you can see here, we've got the last three generations. We've got the M2 Max, which scored a great 25,012. M3 Max, which scored 31,322. But then the M4 Max has pulled out in front again with 36,561. And this is really, really impressive to see. Obviously, what I'm going to say with the graphics cores was that big jump, uh, what we had with the M3 Max went to the M2 Max. Obviously, we had things like ray tracing introduced, and there were some other bits and pieces. And Apple really, really sort of updated the kind of graphics cores the most in the last generation. Obviously, they've just enhanced that this time round, and that's why probably we're not getting the biggest sort of boost that we're getting this time round. But it's still a boost, as you can see right here. And obviously, this is really, really great to see. But then after this, I also did the Cinebench 2024 GPU test. And you can see again, there's a great boost here that we're now getting 16,560 compared to 13,114 on the M3 Max. And then for the last sort of graphics benchmark test that I decided to do, I decided to go back to Geekbench 6 and do the GPU test and have a look here. You can see again all four generations and look at the score difference here. Look at the M1 Max, it was 110,000, whereas the M4 Max, you know, it's 197,000. What was absolutely amazing to see. This time round, you can see there is definitely a big jump in performance in Geekbench 6 with the metal scores. Even compared to the M3 Max, we've got 143,000. Look at that, that jumped to 197,000. This is incredible to see. This is over 25% increase in performance that we've got with the M4 Max compared to the M3 Max. And just in case you wanted to know, I actually did also compare this to the M1 Ultra and also the M2 Ultra. Take a look right here. Well, we can see the M1 Ultra with the top amount of cores you could have for the GPU that was 64, it got 160,158. The M2 Ultra with the top amount of cores inside of that was 76 cores and that used to give us a score of about 2,221. And then the M2 Ultra with its 76 cores, the maximum amount, gives us 221,646. But then this is the incredible thing. With almost half the amount of cores, we're getting 197, 825 with just 40 cores in the M4 Max. We could potentially be seeing a score of around about say 350 to 370, I reckon, thousand for the M4 Ultra when that comes out. That's gonna be absolutely incredible to see there. But the next thing that you guys are probably wondering, well, what does this mean, all these benchmarking bits and pieces? Well, what about if you did like, say, an export, like in a video? What happens if you exported like in one of the most common sort of formats out there, Hevec, for example? What happens if we did an export there, compared that? Well, I exactly did that with Final Cut Pro, with this Mac Mini video that I've got, it's 10 minutes long, and I exported it on the M3 Max and the M4 Max. And as you can see here, with the top amount of RAM inside the M3 Max with 96 gigabytes, it did it in 154 seconds, what is very impressive to see. And then the M4 Max with 128 gigabytes of RAM did it in 132 seconds. That's just over two minutes. Two minutes, 12 seconds to export a 10 minute 4K Hevec file. This is crazy to see. Now another upgrade what we have inside this MacBook Pro is the storage. This is the top amount you can get for it. This is the eight terabyte option. So I decided to run a Blackmagic speed test on this or a disk speed test. And you can actually see here how fast this is going. This is really, really crazy speeds to see. And then again, look at the chart here, comparing it to the M3 Max, what had a eight terabyte inside of that too. You can see the difference that obviously the read speeds are similar-ish with the M4 Max pulling out in front just a little bit there with 5,802, whereas what we used to get on the M3 Max was 5,554 megabytes. But then just look at the write speed here, what we're getting. With the M3 Max, we got 7,587 megabytes per second. Whereas now with the M4 Max with the eight terabyte, we're getting 8,528 
megabytes per second, what is crazy to see. Now, another upgrade that this MacBook Pro has also got, what is a great option to pick as you will see in a second, it's not something that's underneath the hood of this, it's actually something you can see, and that is a nano texture screen. Now, I've actually noticed on YouTube there's not many people actually demonstrating how great this nano texture screen is. They mention it and say it is great, but I wanted to show you a real life sort of situation. With using one of my lights that I've got like right here, I'm gonna shine this on an M3 Max and also this M4 Max to show you the difference. So you can see here, the light is bouncing on the M3 Max reflective, and if I just move across now, look at that on the M4 Max. It's still there, but it's disappeared so much of it, it's crazy. And then look, if I just start moving back to the M3 Max, there we go, you can really, really see it super clearly. And then look, I'll just move it back again to the M4 Max, just to show you again, that is just brilliant, I love that. I would actually say that that nano texture is probably one of the best $150 upgrades that you can do for any of the M4 MacBooks out there. So you know, as much as that you can run into a shop and buy a MacBook Pro off the shelf, I would be double checking it definitely has the nano texture screen because this is a great upgrade to see what you can actually have on your MacBook Pro and it's definitely worth it. And there's something else that's worth looking into on this channel and that is the giveaway we are doing right now for this. This here is an iPhone 16 Pro Max and I'm gonna be giving this away to one lucky subscriber on this channel near the end of December time, just before Christmas time. So that's right, I'm gonna be giving away an iPhone 16 Pro Max and it's the Desert Titanium or Titanium Desert and this here is the 256 gigabyte model and all you have to do at this stage, at this part to, for entering to the giveaways, just put down into the comments below of what technology gear you're hoping to get in 2024 or even into 2025. Maybe you're gonna get yourself a new iPhone. Maybe you're gonna buy yourself one of the new M4 Max, or maybe it's gonna be a PS5 Pro or something else completely different. Let me know in the comments below. And also at the same time, like I said, guys, I'll be announcing who the winner is and also more instructions about the giveaway just before the 24th December. So you won't want to miss out on that because there will be a little form to fill in and things like this. So the best thing I'd recommend you to do is subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell not to miss out on that video when it comes along. The other thing though as well is that you need to be a subscriber to enter in too. So you might as well just do that. The last thing I just want to quickly though say to you guys though is sadly there are scammers and spammers, people impersonating me as you can see right here. Please Please do not send any messages back to these people. The best thing you can do, as you can also see right here, is please do ignore them, or better still, report them. But moving on, some of you guys are probably want to know, well, how good is gaming, for example, on the most powerful M4 Max out there? Well, I did two games to test out. First of all, I did Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this natively runs on Mac OS. And as you can see right here, I actually got some benchmark scores done, and obviously we can see the difference here in frames per second. So this was at medium sort of settings, and the average frames per second at 1920 by 1200, and the M2 Max would give you about 116 frames per second, whereas the M3 Max would give you 145 per second, and then the M4 Max would give you 198 eight frames per second, what is really incredible to see. This is almost 200 frames per second, and sometimes it did go over that, but obviously this is the average amount. But then next of all, what I also decided to test was a crossover game, and I decided to test out Cyberpunk 2077. Even though this is natively coming to the Mac some point in 2025, I thought I'd give this a test right now. Now, as you can see, what I did was I set this up 1080p on AMD FSR 3.0. I decided to run the benchmark kind of tool, and you can see it's quite impressive here, even at the bar scene straight away. And then obviously, if I just skip on to the end here, what we actually got, we got a really impressive score, as you can see right here. We got into the 90 frames per second, what's incredible. And then just looking at the chart here in comparison to the older generations, the M2 Max used to get 57 frames per second what still does. The M3 Max got 83 frames per second and the M4 Max got 95 frames per second. What's absolutely incredible to see. 
Now with all these extra cores and also the top amount of RAM inside of it and super fast SSD, I decided next of all to push this MacBook Pro a little bit beyond, not beyond its limits, but you know, more than what say the average Joe would do with say maybe their MacBook Pro. I decided to run a load of multiple different applications and also export a video at the same time. So as you can see here, I've got Final Cut Pro and it's exporting again in Hebec again. So we're just sharing that right out. So we'll just leave that run there. There we go, just to show you then obviously it is exporting. But I wanted to show you other things I've got open. I have got loads of tabs open here at the top. In fact, I've got 15 different tabs, as you can see, all different variety of them, all just loaded up here in Chrome. I've also got Word open here with a document, and then also I've got a video playing in QuickTime, and then obviously I've got Photoshop, that's open too. Final Cut Pro with its export. I've got Photos open, for example, and then moving over, we've also got this presentation, what I'm showing to you right now so that's also exporting and then obviously we've got steam both varieties the crossover version and the other version there you go it's just behind it there and then obviously i'm also running cinebench and i'm also doing a multi-core export at the same time and just look here in activity monitor how much of that ram is being used it's crazy to see here how much is actually being used there obviously you can see all the apps that are using them and everything this is really really crazy and even in the cpu obviously from a user perspective you can see obviously I'm telling it to do all of this thing so it's fully utilizing that CPU right now so this is really really crazy that you can push it this far and obviously even with the disk sort of speeds reading and writing it's doing a fantastic job of this but then the ultimate question with that is how long did it actually take to export Final Cut Pro well have a look at this chart right here you can see that with the M3 Max, if I did exactly the same tabs and exactly the same scenario, it did it in 195 seconds, whereas the M4 Max 128 gigabyte RAM version did it in 163 seconds. And this was amazing to see. The M4 Max here didn't even buckle underneath the stress. Everything just worked. You just saw it yourself. I could just flick through everything. There were no problems. That's running a benchmark tool on multi-core performance and pushing all the cores to its limit. We're exporting a video at the same time, had all those tabs open, had all those other apps open, and yet the M4 Max just didn't care. And just to let you know, the fan did wear up a bit, but it wasn't actually going like too mad or anything like that. It could more than cope with this and in fact I bet I could probably actually push it even more by opening up even more apps but the main thing was just to show you that scenario of how much you could open up and yet it still wouldn't be stressing out this MacBook Pro it's absolutely phenomenal of a beast of a machine now, what I also want to say at this stage, obviously this here is the most spec'd up MacBook Pro 14 inch that you can get right now. It's probably not the thing I would actually argue for everybody to go and buy, because obviously like we saw, it's over $7,000 to buy, but it's been great to see and great to test how much you can push this MacBook Pro. But I'd love to know from you guys too, is this the sort of kind of configuration that you might even buy? Or let me know in the comments below of what kind of configuration would be right for you. Put it down into the comments below right now. And with that as well, guys, I really hope you have enjoyed watching this video about the most powerful MacBook Pro out there right now, 14-inch model. And also, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed watching it, please also do press the like button. And also, guys, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you also subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.